Roy Jenkins, who had been at Bletchley. Now, our chairman knows about Jenkins, because our chairman was at Bletchley at the time. Jenkins was, well, it was hut eight, wasn't it, Jenkins? Yeah. He just got inside the surface. Exactly, got inside the surface and then shifted administration and nobody prosecuted. It's a great shame, tragedy for our country. He wasn't prosecuted and executed in 44. But of course, Bletchley, Bletchley was secret and um, I think MI5 said they wouldn't tolerate a prosecution because Jenkins was, yeah, exactly. But keep it quiet. Exactly. Our chairman knows all about Jenkins. Jenkins wasn't the only German spy at Bletchley. Kim Philby also got into Bletchley from memory. Philby was in there and he was reporting to Hunland. Philby reported to Canaris. Now, on the TSR2, the German strategy actually goes back to the Tory government because the Tory Defence Minister, Duncan Sands, who authorised the operational requirement, was it OS, OR332, I can't remember, the operational requirement that led to TSR2 was formulated by Duncan Sands, who was a German spy, who in World War II was responsible for the deaths of many bomber command aircrew because he was the man who used to shop our missions to the Jerry's. The reason the Germans were usually waiting for Bomber Command is because they knew the target for tonight. The reason they knew the target for tonight is because Duncan Sands would bloody well tell them the bugger. Now, Bomber Harris didn't know who the German spy was in the Air Ministry. The poor man just knew that there was a German spy. And if you look at the records of Knapp Hill during the war, and I know people who are at Knapp Hill, I'm only life member of Bomber Command, of course, uh, Bomber Harris was desperate to find out who at the Air Ministry was shopping his boys, his lads, uh, to the Luftwaffe, because he knew full well that there was a massive, massive leak, and the leak came out of the Air Ministry. It never came out, it never came out of operational stations. Now, there were a couple of strange incidents where um, one or two air crew joined missions over Germany and didn't necessarily come back, having been invited to drop out um, whilst over Germany. Um, there was some, quite a lot of good work done by air intelligence. One or two of the Jerrys were spotted because the air ministry had people inside the RAF and there were one or two John G1s who, who were, were you know, people keeping an eye on them and I've spoken to air crew who said yes we had to keep an eye on X and that incident in the fictional film where Eagles Dare, where the bad guy Jerry is invited to step out of the Junkers 52, uh, that is probably a reflection of something which happened in real life. Uh, Duncan Sands works for the Germans. Duncan Sands moves in on the Churchill family by arrangement with German intelligence, standard German tactic, one they'd followed with Edward VIII and Wallace Simpson. The German spy, of course, was Wallace, not Edward. And Jenkins was the prime mover on the TSR too. So the, the, ro the role of the two German spies is Duncan Sands sets up the TSR two, funnels all our military intelligence effort into one airframe, and then Jenkins, by arrangement, scraps the airframe and blames the Americans by staging a fake order through Dennis Healy for the F-111, but the only interest the Germans had in the F-111 was acquiring all the intellectual property of the design, which was partly based on work Barnes Wallace had done on the swing wing, and handing it over to the Russians, who were working very closely with the Germans. So the F-111 was a fake order. I've actually briefed in General Dynamics on this, bumped into General Dynamics, uh, bumped into General Dynamics from time to time, very nice people. Uh, that, Amer that order of the F-111 was a complete phony, it was only ever set up to take the sure the Americans make the blame. And the Germans are past masters at this. They will play off Britain, America, and Russia, and Israel against each other. And they are past masters at false flagging and getting us to think the Americans are responsible for X, Y, and Z, when, in fact, it's, um, it's the, the Jerry's sitting behind the Americans. And that's why people like me are so important. I say, puffing, I'm, I'm, I'm overcoming my quintessential natural modesty here. That's why people like me come in, because I go across the Atlantic and I tell the Americans what's really happening, and they have people who come across the Atlantic, and all the three countries, Britain, America, and Russia, Israel also, we're all now exchanging intelligence, swapping lists of German spies. Uh, you know, I tell the Americans McNamara was a Jerry, the Americans will tell us we now know Jenkins was a Jerry. I mean, you know, we, we, we're just comparing notes all the time. That's Jenkins. Comets. Uh, the comets did not crash through to metal fatigue. The only comets which ever suffered metal fatigue only ever suffered it flying out of Rome Airport, which was controlled by a fascist, ex-Italian Air Force uh, officer. Surprise, surprise. The comets only suffered metal fatigue at 26,000 feet, and they only suffered it half an hour after takeoff. Now, normally, Chairman, if you're doing a bit of intelligence analysis, you've got two aircraft which blow up mysteriously over deep water, and you are told the aeroplanes only blow up out of deep water, they only blow up if they're flying out of Rome, they only blow up half an hour after takeoff, and they only blow up at 26,000 feet. That normally just screams, uh huh, barometric valve, barometric fuse, uh, timed uh, timers, 
and uh, an IED. Now, the first... The, the first... No, then, no, then, no, that's not true. Uh, the, the French comets were flying similar routes to the VOAC comets, but interestingly, Chairman, none of the French comets suffered any metal fatigue. Fascinating fact. Uh, again, wrong. The Air France aircraft, the Air France aircraft going to Beirut did not do the same number of hours as the BOAC. The UAT comets, the, French, the UAT Comet 1As, were going down through um, uh, Brazzaville. The UAT comets on the South African run were doing exactly the same number of weekly hours, almost identical to BOAC. Now, the Farnborough test, the Farnborough... the you farm stop, please? <laughs> You've got to love somebody Thank else. Thank you. Yeah. The Farnborough... Mr. You can't, Mr. Chairman, you can't Mr. Chairman, throw excuse, comments. Thank you. my uh, interruption here, but your speaker is very much in danger of sending your guests off to sleep with his pompous conceit and dribble. Well, I, 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 I don't agree with that. No, well, I, I'm sorry that... Uh, Every, everybody's entitled to his and her opinion. Yes. Yeah. All you have to do is to listen quietly Put your hand up if you disagree and I'll let you talk, but don't scramble questions and keep throwing them out. <laughs> it disturbs everybody, it upsets the whole thing. Albert, your turn is next. Well, thank you, Harry. So I've been accused of many things in my life, Mr. Chairman. Sending, sending people to sleep is, is not one of them. But if anybody wants to have a sleep, if you want to have a snooze, you, you carry on. Don't, don't mind the rest of us. Who said it was a dilic? It's completely an utter nonsense. We cannot re-equip our, our armed forces because we have no manufacturing industry to re-equip them. We cannot afford to commit to a big war. And if we commit to a war with the Russians and they roll over Germany, I suspect the Russians will not stop rolling until they pull everything else. Nah. If we end up in a war with Germany, the only way to fight it is to nuke them. Yeah. That is the only way this country will stay free. But we uh, haven't got the money, we're bankrupt country. Right, yeah. dealing, dealing with Albert's points, uh, and I'll come back to finish on the comments, dealing with Albert's points, uh, I, 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 I'm not describing the war as idyllic, I don't want a war. Uh, what I'm saying is a war is likely, and if we want to avoid it, we're going to have to show greater statesmanship than we're showing at the moment. Uh, I think you will underestimate the ability of British industry to ramp up. I think you'll find that ramp up will be uh, just as fast as it was in 1939 and 1914, but the same situation on preparedness of industry uh, was a factor that applied in 1914 and 1939. I have absolutely no reason whatsoever to suppose the Russians, uh, if we have a war with Germany and the Russians come in, that they will at any stage cross the Rhine. There is no reason to suppose that whatsoever. I know there's been a lot of anti-Russian paranoia built up over the last few decades because of, partly because of the result of the work of German propagandists. Don't be paranoid about the Russians. The Russians are the good guys. Very nice people. Vladimir Putin, absolute Margaret. sweetie. Margaret. Uh, are you really telling us the real truth about the Federal Reserve and the Bank of England? Uh, don't they or are they run by the Zionist Jews? All the information and the reason that I do tells me this. And also, so Rothschild did, buy, did not buy 90% of the world's shares and say, I now want the world together now with 30 members of his, his family. Also, um, where's the money coming from to ramp up our army? Aren't we bankrupt? Will it be the same people financing us who financed both sides of the last world war, the Zionist Jews? And also, um, you work for MI5. Have you got dossiers on all of us here? And do you report back to MI5 on the door? <laughs> <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I don't know. The, the, the conspiracy theories about me swirl around the internet, I know. I don't work for MI5, and, and I'm sure Jonathan Evans, who's a totally nice man, the DG, will confirm that for you. Uh, no, and I don't... I don't uh, no, I don't. No, 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 no. I, I have lunch with MI5 from time to time. I might work with MI5. I certainly never work for MI5, and I certainly wouldn't report back uh, on any meeting I'd addressed. If I'm invited as a guest, I certainly wouldn't dream of doing a report back. Uh, if anybody else here is reporting back to MI5, that's absolutely fine. But Jonathan Evans, I'm sure, will be happy to confirm that I've never worked for MI5. Um, just coming back to the, this, this conspiracy idea that uh, the banking is controlled by Jews, it's it, it, completely wrong.